How you doing? I'm Sean with the uh, Soda Solar RV Solar Channel, and uh, today we are doing something a little bit different. Uh, we're coming up to the week of the summer solstice, so we're going to try and record something uh, every day and just share what's going on around the shop. We got a lot of little stuff that probably doesn't necessitate an entire video. So if you want to see what's it like hanging out here, uh, the different things we're working on every day, I'm going to try my best to capture all that and share it with you. So. If that's of any interest to you, uh, keep watching, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, maybe what you'd like to see in the following days. I uh, can't commit to doing this all the time, but let's give it a try. So uh, the boys are working on something uh, back there and that I'm really excited to share with you about because it's uh, something old. All right, the boys, uh, we got Dave and Levi working on this uh, Grand Design Imagine, which is, uh, if you, some of you go all the way back to about tw the summer of 2022 working in our driveway, we worked on, uh, a system where we put 800 amp hours of battery in this space here, and now we're taking it out. Uh, we were putting these batteries in. These are ones that we actually bought from a company called Evolution Power back, I would say, before there were reputable and affordable lithium batteries. We commissioned to have these built ourselves. These are 200 amp hours each with a JBD BMS capable of 200 amps with low temp charge to protect. Now remember in 2022, that was a hard commodity to find at a decent price. Uh, they did not have heating at the time, uh, but they're still a darn good battery. So we're gonna keep those. Uh, we do have one we gotta fix or repair or figure out what's going on with it. But uh, yeah, we had four of them in here. This customer's upgrading and they want to take their equipment out. So now we get to eat our words or at least put our theories to the test. When we design systems, when we put systems together, we're always thinking about how can we unwind it? How can we undo? How can we back out of what we're doing? And as you as RVers know, you don't go down any road unless you can figure out a way back out. And that's the same thing that we like to do uh, with our electrical system. So we're going to be doing that today. Pulling that out. We've already pulled out the equipment. I'll show you a picture here. All right, see? That looked pretty sharp, didn't it? So we gotta get just a normal plain Jane battery hooked up. And what I'll probably do is actually leave that same picture in here for the previous owners and say, hey, if you want something like this, we can help you out with that too. So at the same time, we're thinking about that as well. That uh, maybe, <laughs> who knows, maybe this one will be back and we could, uh, set this up as kind of like a version two. What would we do if we did the system all over again? Solar golf cart here is working okay. We got uh, some mounts here that need to be fixed. First time golf cart rack maker there, so definitely version one problems. Levi's working here. Oh yeah. Yep, he's taking screws out. I'm putting him in. Oh, you're putting them in, good thinking. Yeah. But, uh, oh, I wanted to mention this here real quick before we move on to other things going around here. Uh, I'm really, this battery compartment that we made worked out so well. It held up so good. I'm really happy about that. And so again, we're just using this space here that was typically dead or unusable. And we turned that into 800 amp hours of storage space. Didn't lose anything up there. <laughs> And as you can tell, we didn't get any frame flex as far as I'm aware. So we're in good shape there. All right, Levi, you and Dave, get after it, get her done. Oh yeah. So we got some other things around the shop I wanna show or share with you about that we're actually moving along on and hopefully some, th some of those things will move along while we're here. Want to update you on uh, this little thing that we got around. <laughs> it's a uh, schoolie that we've been working on. It's been here almost a year and uh, we actually, oh, something's complaining here. That's part of what I was gonna share with you about. We, uh, let's, come on, let's acknowledge that. Uh, this actually is a battery we built for the customer using their cells. They provided these cells. We did the battery uh, containment system. I had a feeling what ended up happening happened or was going to happen. Uh, Two of the cells here pretty much died on us through the winter because this was here all winter. And there's another set that are kind of overvolting. The cells were pretty, I think they had sat in here for about four or five winters and gotten really over discharged. So actually, 
uh, talk to the customer. And what we're gonna end up doing is putting in two Epic 24 volt batteries here. Uh, we still got a sale going on those if you're interested. Uh, I can give you a sweet deal, a deal I probably can't advertise, but uh, let me know. I can get you a great deal on those if you're interested. But uh, we're gonna put two of those in here for them. And that's gonna work way better anyway. Each one of those batteries, we, we kind of figured we were only getting about 200 amp hours with this thing. With those Epics, we can get 230 per, and we're going to do two of them. So that's going to work great. Uh, the mini split in here is still working really good. But uh, the rest of this is uh, the customer is going to be taking care of in here. So, And this is pretty much the way it was brought to us. We just put this panel together here. That's what we did for them. And uh, I think they're about ready to take this and finish the build out this summer. Then we got this uh, box truck that we've been working on. Dave's gonna be working on this here this summer. So be looking for that kind of stuff. Uh, what we're doing with this box truck is actually, this is for a uh, downhole well inspection company. And what they do is uh, inspect the city and county wells that go thousands of feet down sometimes. And they've got to hang out in here while the cable is going down into the wellhead. And there is going to be a whole control room on the inside. Now, he already has a truck, but it's uh, from the, I would say, from the 70s, late 70s, early 80s. And he can't find anyone to work on it anymore, so he wants a new platform. So we're going to be working on that, pretty much doing kind of like a schooly, you know, DIY build-out. We've already started insulating the floor. Uh, previous company kind of insulated the roof, we're going to step that up a little bit because we're going to be doing heating and air conditioning in here. We're going to really try and do it up the way we would do it if it was ours. So there's going to be a whole control room in here in the front half and then all the equipment uh, like the cable reel and all that stuff in the back half. So we're kind of looking forward to that. I think we even might put like a little mini fridge in there. Because uh, again, if you're in here for four to eight hours inspecting a well, you should have some drinks and some snacks. It's got to be uh, pleasant for everybody, I think. If anyone's curious why we're qualified to uh, build out a box truck or anything like that is, well, here's our old RV, and this is one of the things that brought us into this business. We actually took this from bare framing to a complete RV, and I think we did a fine job, if I do say so myself. So fine, in fact, that uh, kind of unofficial announcement, that is our new bus that we're going to be working on, and... Uh, that is probably going to uh, be part of reviving our uh, Himmelberger bus channel. We're gonna start work on that at some point, but we are making sure that we take care of our work first before we do that fun project. And uh, that's one of the things I'm trying to show to uh, the boy here by example is that we do our work first, then we play and screw around with our hobby projects, right? Yes. Yeah, he, just talk normal. Okay. <laughs> He's such a goofball sometimes. And inside the shop here, of course, we get the bear. It's getting a little warm out, so he likes to lay in here and just do bear things. Isn't that right, Mr. Bear? Yeah. <laughs> He's uh, exactly what you'd imagine of a Bernese Mountain Dog. They call him a Velcro dog. He usually is very affectionate and likes to hang out with me. There you go. If... Uh, if you come by, he will give you a big bark because he's just, he don't know you yet. But after, uh, I'd say at least one to two minutes, he will be more than happy to sit on your feet and say, okay, now it's time to pet me. <laughs> that's, that, that's just what, yes, I know. All right, here's a uh, Airstream base camp. Base camp X, it's a little one here. Uh, but we just got done installing uh, a bunch of Victron products in here. We had to get a little bit creative so what we have here is a pretty much transforming this into a complete off-grid setup. Now the uh, fridge, uh, if it runs 12 or 120, uh, the microwave, and all the outlets here now work. I just got done programming the MultiPlus. We installed all of our extra equipment in here. Got the MultiPlus, the one of these new smaller ones, the 12 volt, 12,000 VA uh, inverters uh, and charger. That's the beauty of the MultiPlus. And then we also added a 30 amp solar charger with breaker. I think that's important. All right, here's how the wiring on here turned out. We ended up using a uh, 
resetting breaker on here because so if this were to over amp we want that to automatically reset because it's going to be buried behind that uh, uh, cover a couple layers of cover so we didn't want to have to go hunting for a reset switch on that so that's how that worked and we had to run the uh, uh, orange AC in and out from the panel over there underneath the shower and into there so that's how that ended up working out one of the things I'm most excited in this one is uh, typically where you got that Sun Explorer monitor here, we replace this with the Victron BMV battery monitor. And we do that by adapting the uh, eight conductor ethernet cable to the cable that the Victron BMV wants. So then you get all access to all of your information. We're still, we don't get quite enough solar, so we're still kind of going backwards here a little bit but batteries at 95%, all that stuff. And of course, this is all accessible through your phone with the Bluetooth uh, Victron Connect app. And I uh, just wanna show you exactly how well this works. Um, well, we don't need the computer, I guess, but I just got done programming it and it just actually got done testing the microwave, but that was the thing the customer really wanted was to be able to run that. So I'll just show you here. There we go. Uh, this is probably about the biggest appliance I would recommend running off of this. I would not even consider running the air conditioner. But uh, it's only putting out 9 amps, and that is capable of outputting 16 amps AC. And we kind of did the math on that too. That should be plenty good for this as well. Even though this is a 30 amp camper, it doesn't ever use close to 30 amps in the real world. So there we go. We just warmed up our coffee directly from battery and solar in a tiny base camp. Well, it's been a long day here, and uh, as you can see behind me, some things have changed. Uh, that Airstream we were talking with, or I was showing you a little bit about, that is gone, and in its place is a new Airstream, a bigger one. Uh, we're gonna be finishing up an install that a uh, dealer did, and we'll see how that goes. So, uh, I mean, we'll do that in tomorrow's episode. Uh, we got the shop cleaned up. We got a big project coming in tomorrow. We are going to have a blast. That's definitely what we're going to do. All right. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.